Hello, Professor Brian Cox. My name is Larry. I want to ask if the fabric and space and time collides or collapses together, what happens? If you don't know, feel free to tell me. First, I want to tell you what you want to know about the fabric of space and time and some of my suggestions of how it will happen. On the fabric of space and time, what I know is that it was Einstein theory in, I think it was special relativity or general relativity. I know that the fabric of space and time is the building blocks of the universe, including me any, or anything that lives or anything that's not living. To the tiniest of an atom to the size of IC1101 the galaxy. I've heard that it makes everything in this universe. I've also heard that something with immense mass makes a huge semisphere hole in the fabric of space and time. I've heard that it's caused by the mass which causes gravitational waves which is one of the latest one of the latest discoveries well a, dis a theory that has been proved i've heard that if the fabric of space and time collapses it could go either in a, cat a catastrophic kaboom destroying everything in the shock wave it could cause a, uh, an immense black hole, like a supernova or a hypernova does, or it, or it could cause another chain reaction with the shock wave. More and more chain reactions until the universe might be destroyed. If, if it collides, uh, the only thing I think is a catastrophic boom. Everything getting everything in this park getting destroyed in a millisecond, which would be catastrophic, extremely catastrophic. So she, will, so finally her as we know it would be destroyed. So we would say, we'd have to say bye bye to everything. I'm also looking for a way to prevent a. Uh, a catastrophic collide, collision, or cl collapse in the fabric of space and time. I don't want anything to happen to this universe as we know it. If you have any ways to prevent this or coming up with a theory or hypothesis, please tell me. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I want to know which way is a collision or, co or collapse in the fabric of space and time happens. Does it happen in a catastrophic room, a collapse to a black hole, or a chain reaction, and so on. I don't know all the theories. So I, so I want you to tell me some more. I also want to know which is worse, a collision, which would be extremely catastrophic, and a uh, collapse. I, th I think a collapse would be more catastrophic, because if a collapse caused a black hole, the black hole could devour everything. Not, if the multiverse theory was true, then it would, it would devour every single universe, which I hope isn't true. But then, if, if, the, if a chain reaction happens, if it collides, two full forms of fabric in space and time, one, one point would collapse, but the shock would, would carry out a chain reaction creating more and more black holes which I think could event in a more faster 
a more faster depth for everything in the universe that it devours. That could be the future. If now, present, we've got to work out how to stop an ordinary black hole. I'm wondering if you or any other scientist you know could gather up and collect enough light matter that could that would be more than dark matter, dark, dark matter that makes black holes. I've heard that dark matter makes black holes because I've seen an image that gravitational waves spinning around a particle of dark matter or a couple, it was being spinning inward like a black hole. So I'm wondering if, if the formation could be somewhere the same. So, so if 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 we could gather enough or somewhere near about twenty five thousand Tyrannosaurus side blocks or more bigger like plutonium side blocks of of light matter, would that be enough to stop a black hole? I surely think that would be enough because like I feel that like Pluton is one of the rulers of the seas of the Cretaceous period. Cretaceous period is the most fiercest period of the dinosaurs, which including Spinosaurus, T Rex, Hadnus Dinosaurus, and so on. Well, now I'm going. Well, now for a chief talk so far, I'll get asking somebody you a dinosaur question, so I don't want to go on. So, so if we could gather enough light matter to stop a black hole, well, the problem is, I don't want, I don't want anything sending light matter into the black hole if they're go going to get sucked in in the process of spaghettification. So. <laughs> If that's going to happen, just count me out. Actually, do send a robot or something. Then we won't have any humans going in there. And if humans go in there, I hate to see what happens. Don't, don't even tell me what happens. If what happens is gruesome. You got that anybody who's watching that? Now, my final question, how much light matter would, would be enough to stop a black hole? Well, before this video ends, I want to explain what dark matter and light matter is. As you should know that dark matter and light matter are opposite types of matter, like antimatter and matter. I heard that dark matter, rather than emitting light, absorbs light, like black. I know, I know a few differences. The first one is obvious. Dark matter makes. So, some scientists say that dark matter makes seventy-one percent of the whole universe, which leaves twenty-nine percent to light matter. That is a major difference. Then another major difference is that we can't see uh, if we can't see dark matter. Uh, well, light matter we made of it, so that's how we can see it. Well, dark matter we're not made of it. The reason we why we can't see it. In any types of radiation is because it absorbs light, any type of light. Well, well, uh, I'm taking you back to gamma rays here. A particle of dark matter would have quite a hard time absorbing an energetic beam of gamma rays. Gamma rays are the most powerful rays I know that has been proved. I've heard that that quasars 
she she immense amount of gamma rays into the vast region of space. I've also heard that quasars are formed by the energetic supermassive black hole in centers of galaxies. Well, I'm wondering if a supermassive galaxy was in a dwarf galaxy, how long would it take the supermassive black hole to devour the dwarf galaxy? And if, and how long would a supermassive black hole that would that was about the size of the one that's in our Milky Way. How long would it take to devour the Triangulum Galaxy? And what, what, and what is the difference between how long it took to devour the Triangulum Galaxy and how long might it take to devour that? Andromeda Galaxy and compare that to the large angelic cloud and, and compare it to IC I nine eight our galaxy. Uh, well I don't know if this is a dark galaxy, a spiral galaxy, a uh, irregular galaxy or a regular galaxy because I don't so I have the ability to zoom it that much in Sterellium. Well, these are, these are the questions I've asked you. How to prevent a black hole? How, how do we stop a black hole? Does light matter affect the black hole? How much light matter does it take to stop a black hole? How, how do we... How do we protect ourselves against a collision or collapse in the fabric of space and time? How do we, how do we stop a shock wave from either a supernova, hypernova, or a, or a collision in the fabric of space and time? That's all the questions. Bye.